Good stewards know we become Christ-like when we show mercy, when we forgive. We are celebrating today the Feast of Christ the King. But as I said at the beginning of the Mass, I believe there is a great irony in the Gospel passage that Deacon Jim just read. We're celebrating the Feast of Christ the King. But we're not talking about Jesus sitting on a throne in heaven. The Gospel passage is about his crucifixion. The king, the king of the world, the king of the universe. And the church says what shows that best is not a throne, it's an ignominious death on a cross. A death on a cross. A cross. The people at the time would have said, that man's life was useless. Look how he died, naked, hanging on a cross. It reminds me of a passage in Ingmar Bergman's movie, the Silent Night. Algot is a sexton, a church sexton. He's disabled, he's in constant pain. And at one point in the movie, he talks about, he says, you know, it's so terrible. It never ends. It just never, ever ends. I'm always in pain. And Algot's pain reminds him of Jesus. And he says, you know, he did so much. He healed so many. He loved so greatly. But it seemed at the end of his life that his life was useless. He was absolutely alone, absolutely abandoned. It seemed as if his life was useless. Well, we know that Jesus' life was far from useless. In fact, it was just the reverse. His life, especially his death on the cross, was the most useful thing by an infinite amount in the history of the world. Because his crucifixion forgave our sins. And he taught us, Jesus did, from that cross, not only what I tell you so frequently that we can't ever legitimately say no matter how terrible we feel, no matter how great our pain is, that you don't understand, God. You don't understand. Sure he understands. He chose to die that way, to send us a message. He does understand. He chose to die that way to show us, to show us that the heart of love is mercy it's forgiveness and as we heard in our gospel passage Jesus does it in a very bold way because one of the criminals hanging on the side of him asked Jesus to remember him and you've heard me say it before Historians say the guy we call the good thief, he was a murderer. He had murdered Roman soldiers, and that's why he was hanging on the cross. 
So this guy who had murdered Roman soldiers asked Jesus to remember him. Doesn't even ask for forgiveness. And Jesus turns into a man with that track record, a murderer, says, okay, I'm giving you a one-way ticket to heaven. I'm showing you mercy. Today, you'll be with me in paradise, in heaven. Jesus did not abandon anyone, any one of us who just remotely reaches out to Jesus. He is going to shower us with his forgiveness because he abandons no one. How many of you remember Howard Hughes? Okay, a fair number of you. In his time, Howard Hughes was the richest man in America. He was worth billions of dollars. He owned an airline, a string of planes, casinos, hotels. He was a brilliant man. But in the last 15 years of his life, Howard Hughes abandoned his family. He was eccentric. And his family abandoned him. And when Howard Hughes finally died, the authorities had a really difficult time finding a family member to come claim the body. The best they could do was a distant cousin. And when the cousin got there, he was shocked. Howard Hughes was six feet four inches tall, When he died, he was six feet one inches tall. And he was down to 90 pounds. The last 15 years of his life, Howard Hughes was a drug addict. And again, he was a weird, eccentric man. And because of his drugs, because of his personality, he had abandoned his family. And they said, okay, we're going to show you. You abandon us. We're going to abandon you. But Jesus says, no, that's not the way it's supposed to be. The good thief did nothing, nothing to deserve getting a one-way ticket to heaven. But Jesus didn't abandon him. To a man who just asked to be remembered again, he gave complete and total forgiveness and gave him a one-way ticket to heaven. And that's what we're supposed to do. Here's a modern parable. It's based on a true story. Al's son, Bud, was a drug addict. Like many drug addicts, he stole his family blind. And his dad finally gave up on him when he didn't show up at his grandmother's funeral. Why? Because he was home when no one else was home, stealing his mother's engagement ring to go buy more drugs. But eventually wound up in jail convicted of an armed robbery to feed his habit. And his dad gave up on him. He abandoned his son. Until one Sunday, he heard his priest, Father Charlie, preaching on this gospel passage, the so-called good thief passage. And Al went to see Father Charlie and said, what do you think I should do? with my son. And Father Charlie said, well, I'd go see him. He knows, and you can repeat it, that you hate the things that he did in life, but tell him, because Jesus requires it, that you forgive him and that you love him. And the spiritual question of the morning for each of us is, Yeah, we're all here today at Sunday Mass, and that's terrific. Thank you. Many just don't come. But do we abandon Jesus? 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. For hours at a stretch, do we give him a single thought? For days at a stretch, do we fail to forgive family members, colleagues, other family and friends? My sisters and brothers, we are all called to be good stewards. And good stewards know we become Christ-like when we show mercy and when we forgive.